Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I will show you how you can set up the in-memory database as well as how you can seed some data to your existing database. Okay, and followed by, I'm gonna show you how you can switch between the in-memory and the real database based on some configuration. So, without delay, come let's get started. So the code that you're looking here is a basically a to-do app, a simple to-do app built using clean architecture. Okay, so in this clean architecture, we have three controllers and there's a working code. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can add the in-memory database and how you can see the database. And, and I'm also going to show you some tips in this that will tell you how the EF core handles the seeding with in-memory and non-in-memory database right okay so first thing first all what you have to do is you have to go to this web api and then if you go to program.cs what we have right now is we have something called um so if you go to this program.cs you see this builder.service add in memory database okay so this is a custom method that we wrote if you remember in the video if you go inside basically what we are doing is we are writing that piece of logic in a separate i extension method like we're writing it uh, as a separate extension method that is nothing but the service collection so writing it separately here and or putting it over there is same but as per the clean architecture it's better to separate certain things to its own layer now coming back to this database right so service dot add database like add db context and then you say which db context when you pass the option right you can say option dot use in memory database and then you can say the database name okay this is the in memory thing now when you are using in memory and you wanted to seed some data how would you seed what we are going to do is again we are going to go to the program.cs and then we are going to write some piece of logic that will seed some information so let me one more time recap we have under domain entities three entities these are three tables we're going to seed some information to these tables okay so now what we will do we will write a piece of logic okay like this so i am going to copy a piece of logic come to this controller here okay so here where the middleware is configured okay so i'm writing a piece of logic here what i'm saying is i'm opening a scope like using app the app is nothing but the builder one app dot service dot create scope which means what this will do is this variable right this variable will be able to get any of the services here you see this any of the services here that we configured any of the services it can inject that's why we have to write this piece of logic at the end because this is a middleware before configuration we cannot write so all the services are configured it's coming through middleware and the last step when the application is booting we are saying we are taking a variable of this scope scope dot service provider dot get required service we are getting an instance of this app db context once we have the context we are passing to a method called seed data and we are passing the context so what is this seed data will have simple all what we are going to do is we are going to write a seed method here like this okay so let me close this so it's just a private static method seed method it is just accepting the db context so now once you have db context as you know it has all the three tables like this users to do items and to do list so we are basically adding the records inside each of this and directly doing a commit so what this will do is every time for example i'm going to run this every time that you have the in memory database it is going to run like this and seed the data if this data so obviously this data will not be there for in memory every time you reboot data is cleared off like there's no physical database so every time you start the application and then if you go and check those two data that we seeded right those two will come you see this john doe john doe these are nothing but the one that we seeded here right user id one and two exactly same so if you even come to the to do items which we never seed this is some some data that we seed is coming here so this is how you see the in memory but let me show you something important and interesting before that what we are going to do is so let's let's bring up this right let's make this as configurable so let's go to app settings 
and 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 i'm going to go to the development settings which is here okay i'm going to add a property called use in memory db as a property name and setting as true okay if it is true what it will do we are going to do the uh, if it is true we are going to use the in memory so we need to read this configuration right so how do you read configuration same thing let's go to program.cs and we can read the configuration like this so program.cs and then let's go all the way through up here after you get the builder so here we will create a variable called use in memory db it is basically taking it from the configuration so builder.configuration.get value the value is actually bools that's why it, we are casting it to blue i mean we are casting it to bool and this is the property name so this will tell you true or false okay so if it is true what we will do we will write the logic here if this is oops sorry if is if use in memory database is true then we will do this logic else we will really contact the real database which we will write shortly now here also same thing so we will say if use in memory then we will use this logic else we will use a different logic okay so what is different logic let's say i have a real database connected to a server so i'm going to bring up this connection string to this app settings dot development dot json so connection string it's basically my local uh, sql server uh, connection string i have a um, you know let's say demo okay demo so i created a database like, like this and then it is talking to the local locally running instance so for example if i open this and if i do this refresh let me show you the real thing you see this i do not have demo app here okay it just has to do app right so i'm gonna bring this down and here is the important thing whenever you use the real database and if you wanted to seed there is a proper way of writing seeding this this logic that i wrote it here works only for in memory and you should not use this kind of a logic for a real database seeding so karthik how do i do it good what we will do is let's go to this data project under the infrastructure there is something called data expand this go to this app db context okay so if you go to app db context there is some method called on model creating so db context has a method called on model creating we can override that method like this okay so protected override means this method name is already present here okay if you don't believe me i'll go inside this if i copy you see this it should be here definitely you see it's there okay so we are going to override this method what we are going to do is we are going to see the uh, the data from here okay so now here comes the interesting thing so under here under this infrastructure okay what we will do is we will create a folder called configuration like i said anything that is related to data all of those things should come here right so we will create a folder called configuration and then i'm going to create a a file called user configuration okay so right click add the user configuration and here is the good way of writing i'm going to copy paste and explain you right so use a configuration class that implements i entity type configuration and i entity type configuration will expect a table a, a class an entity that is nothing but a table so in this case it's a user table so once you have this because you are implementing this i entity type configuration there is something method called configure you have to implement this configure so this code is going to run through it okay so here it is expecting a builder which is nothing but entity type builder of that type which is the user class so builder dot has data and then pass some user records so what this will do is it will go and see okay there's a database there's a table called user table 
do that user table has this record if this record is not present this will insert as a default value so for example right where when this is useful let's say you have table called category and the categories are like it, it needs to be always there okay or first time when you load some some sample information is required this is only for good development purpose so you can feed these kind of information like this okay so now this setup is done right what we have to do is let's go to this app uh, context so here what we will do is we will say model builder dot apply configuration look at this model builder dot apply configuration and pass a new instance of this user configuration similarly i am going to add two more configuration called to do item configuration which is again same thing only the method the the class is different if you go to list another entity just the class different and then you are feeding the same records okay look at this you're feeding for information here you're feeding the list here you're feeding the users here if i go to app context all what you have to do is we have to do two things okay we will add these two more things so all the three is fed seeding is done and we will also then call the base dot order model creating which means after this our settings is done it has to call the existing on model creating and pass this builder this will ensure the data is created now if you remember in the program dot cs there's an else part right we never configure the else part for both here and and the bottom one so that's the next part so let's go to our else part else part is same it's easy right it's a regular one builder dot service dot add db context we are passing the db context and some option in the option we are passing the connection string to be taken it from there and we are also saying if it fails uh, you know we are passing an option called enable retry if you remember one of the video i was showing about the question and answer about the entry framework this is the resilience uh, type right so it's very resilient if it fails it can retry automatically now this is missing because uh, we need to bring up a package so let's quickly add the entity framework dot sql package so let's copy this go here make it manage nugget package browse entity framework got our sql server where is that here the second one install all good go here control period done error is gone so this else part is done so this this one will come when uh, we set to true if we set to false which we are going to do now if we set to false we wanted to use the real database right now so now what we will do we will go to the else statement of this one so here what we are going to do is okay again same scope okay all what we are doing is if the database itself is not present we are creating this database dot ensure created ideally for example if you have created an empty database okay you don't need this code but this is for your understanding we are creating a database over the programmatically itself like through program we create even creating the database so i'm going to save this put a breakpoint here run this see we have hit this now we're going to go inside got this it is checking whether for the given connection the database do exist or not actually the database was not existing right so i'm going to refresh now because that was created you see this it's created but look at this let's go and see records see it has also configured all the default values okay if i if i go and click here see all of these the dummy data that we created got created so this is how you do the seeding for in memory as well as the um, you know the real database all right guys so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video do subscribe to my channel if you have any specific questions to let me know in the comment section i'm happy to hear i'm happy to help you and uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up plus share this with your friends and your circle and i will see you in the next interesting video all right bye bye
Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!